New Hope TV, your encounter with God. A couple of weeks back, we started on one particular verse, rather two verses from the scripture. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9. It actually shows the root for our salvation. It says that if you confess with your lips the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. How many can say amen to that? Amen. amen. For with their heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So from the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 9, last time I had the opportunity to share, we talked about if you confess with your lips that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now we'll take the second part of it, that if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. In a combination of both these will assure you of your salvation according to God's word. We saw last time the magic word. What is the magic word for your salvation? The magic word is Lord. Of course, Jesus, of course, Jesus is the Lord. There is nobody else who can qualify to be your Lord and your master, your king, your savior. But I just want to draw your attention how important it is to understand the Lord. It's not just the lip service of a word Lord. It is the attitude that you have to Jesus, that he is your Lord, he owns you, that you belong to him, that you are under his control. Everything that you do is to please that Lord. It is to please the master. The greatest uh, recognition that a servant can get from the master is to do the master's will. Not your will, but his will. That's why even Jesus told the Lord, Father, Lord, if it is your will, let it be done. Surrendering to the will of the Father. That is the greatest act. So today, you and I need to understand that we need to surrender to the will of God, Jesus, our Lord. When you read the word, you find in the book of Luke chapter 23, verse 42, there was uh, that the, the person who was crucified, one of them who was crucified is Jesus. He was a sinner. He was a condemned to die. Not only in the in the, in the rules of the law of the land, but even spiritually, because he had transgressed the law. But the magic word on the cross, he said, Lord, remember me when you are coming to your kingdom. That one word changed his whole attitude, changed his destiny. A person who was destined to go to hell was now destined to go to be with Jesus. He said, today, I tell you, you will be with me in paradise. That one word Confessing the Lordship of Jesus. Again, when you look at Zacchaeus, we know that he was a public sinner. And in the book of Luke chapter 19 verse 7 again, Zacchaeus, he told the Lord, 8, sorry, 19 verse 8 says, he repented and called Jesus Lord. Lord. Again, you'll find the adulterous woman, who again, according to the law of the land, was to be stoned to death. Her, her destiny was death. But the minute she said, Lord Jesus. I mean, Jesus asked, does nobody else condemn you? He says, Lord, no. Nobody else. Nobody is here. So I want to tell you, the minute you make Jesus your Lord, you are saved. Because God's word says, if you confess with your lips that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. Another aspect of that is confession, is also belief, is that God raised him from the dead. You need to understand, I mean, today I was reading, it was so, so striking. I never, I never... You never thought of it earlier. When you read the word in the book of John, I mean, the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 4. If you can turn with me to your Bible. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 4. It is so clear. And declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So it is a resurrection from the dead of Jesus Christ that manifested to the world that here stands the Son of God. Many people die. Are you with me? Many people are killed for their offenses. I may be rightly or wrongly. But only Jesus rose from the dead. Are you with me? So it is a resurrection from the dead of Jesus Christ that confirmed that he is the son of God. Read it once more. You'll, you'll understand the, the significance of that resurrection. The resurrection is what proved that Jesus was not an ordinary man born of Joseph, as they say, Joseph and Mary, but he was the son of God. He says, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of Holiness by, the declaration is by, the resurrection from the dead. Are you with me? 
It is Jesus rose from the dead. So it is that you must confess. That he rose from the dead and he is now seated with the Father. That confession, when you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you are actually confessing in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Hello, are you with me? Are you with me? You are confessing. That is why otherwise, just believing that God raised, I mean, he rose again is, uh, is just a historical fact. But the word of God here with Romans 1, 4 very clearly says that he was declared to be the son of God by the resurrection from the dead. It is a resurrection from the dead which set Jesus apart from the whole of mankind and made him the exclusive, unique son of God. Today, that is why when you believe that Jesus is son of God, you are saved. It is not the resurrection because it's a historical fact. The resurrection confirmed that he is the son of God. So when you confess the resurrection, you are actually confessing uh, the son of God who rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Again, book of Acts chapter 2 verse 24 says, Whom God raised from the dead, sorry, raised up, having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be held by it. Death has no dominion over God. Just like that, I want to tell you, in the spiritual realm, death has no dominion over you. If you have been resurrected with Christ. Because God's word very clearly says if you, in the book of Romans chapter 6, that if you are united together in the, in the likeness of his death, you shall surely be united together in the likeness of his resurrection. And if you are united together in the likeness of his resurrection, that a person is condemned to death. But God so says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walketh not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So I want to tell you that death cannot hold you. Death can no longer hold you. Because you have been freed from death. Because you have been resurrected with Jesus. Are you with me? The man, the new man, the, because of God's word says in, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that he, if one is in Christ, uh, he's a new creation. The old has gone, the old death has gone, and the new has come, the eternal life has come into us. So no death can hold. So I want to tell you something. See, if you and I are brothers of Jesus Christ, whatever God has promised for Jesus is also my promise. If death could not hold Jesus, because he was resurrected. If I die to myself and I am born again, then death cannot hold me any further. Again, next verse 32 says, This Jesus God has raised up, for which we are all witnesses, of which we are all witnesses. Hallelujah. So you need to understand, the resurrected God, Jesus, is the, my Lord. That is why when you read the word in the book of Philippians chapter 3, Paul was so, 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 so zealously craving to know that the resurrected Lord. When you read in Philippians chapter, uh, chapter 3 verse 10 it says, That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings uh, being conformed to his death. So being conformed to his death. So it is only when I am conformed to his death, I can be conformed to his resurrection. Are you with me? So if Jesus, death could not hold Jesus, then if I am conformed to the death, then death, I mean, conformed to the death of Jesus, then that I am also resurrected with Jesus and no longer can death hold me. Hallelujah. Again, when you read, when you, so Jesus, you need to understand one thing, he was, he, his resurrection is actually a foretaste of our own resurrection. Are you with me? A foretaste of, that is, like I told you earlier, death can no longer hold you. So the resurrection of Jesus and proving that he is a son of God, is a foretaste of my resurrection and I dare say of us being sons and daughters of God. God very clearly says in the epistle of John that now we know that we are sons and daughters of God. We are children of God. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15, 14 says, If Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. I want to tell you one thing. That is why I'm trying to tell you again and again. If Christ is not risen, then the man who walked around on the earth ministering, saying that he is Christ, he is not God. Hello. I hope I'm not blaspheming. Hello. I hope you are not taking it as a blasphemy. If... Christ was not resurrected, then the man who walked on this earth performing miracles is not the son of God. But the very fact that he was resurrected is the ample proof and demonstration that that person is the son of God. 
Are you with me? Hallelujah. I have no doubt that Jesus was there. What I'm trying to tell you is, Jesus, it is his resurrection which proved to the whole world that here is the Son of God. That is what you should believe. Again, verse 15 of 1 Corinthians 15 says, Yes, we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead also uh, do not rise. So Paul is again and again saying, if Jesus had not risen, then we are false witnesses. We are going around saying that here is the Son of God. We are false witnesses to the world because it is the resurrection only that made Jesus or set him apart from the other people. Are you with me? So it is so important for us to understand the resurrection and to value the resurrection of Jesus. Because today he is in the, along with the Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Again, verse 16 of that same chapter says, For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. See again, see, the, the, the sentence is put the other way around actually. So if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. Actually, it is. If Christ is not risen, then the dead won't rise. Are you with me? If Christ is not risen, then the dead won't rise. Which means what? If Christ is risen, how many of you believe that Christ is risen? Then you and I will rise again. Hallelujah. That's what the word says. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. But Christ is risen, therefore the dead will arise. Hallelujah. Verse 17 says, And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Because I want to tell you again and again, Christ rose. And then you know when you read the word in the book of John, you'll find Jesus telling Martha, or is it Mary? That's not relevant. Telling, do not touch me. I have not ascended to the Father. Mary. Mary. Tell me, I have not ascended to the Father. Because when you read the book, uh, book of Hebrews chapter 6, you will find that he entered the veil in the order of Melchizedek as a high priest with the blood, his own blood. Are you with me? So you need to understand, all this happened because Jesus rose from the dead. So if Jesus had not risen from the dead, there was no propitiation of sins because the blood of the lamb had to be brought as the justification, forgiveness of our sins and the justification of each one of us. So if Jesus was not risen, then as the word says here, and if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are believing in a person who was working wonders, miracles. You are, you are not putting your trust in your life in a God, the son of God. So he says, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Because what? The blood was not being presented before the holy of holies in the Father. That here is the blood of the Lamb of God as a propitiation for the sin of the world. Are you with me? That would not have taken place if Jesus had not risen. So if Jesus had not risen and the blood was not given as a propitiation for my sin and your sin, then you are still in your sins. And if you are still in your sins, you are deserving the condemnation. And you of faith is futile in that. This is what we need to understand. How important it is to believe that Jesus is raised from the dead. Again, verse 18 says, Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. That is people who believed in Christ. Now if he, if he had not risen, they are just like anybody else. There is no hope. The word is trying to build up how important it is to believe. And in the end, you need to understand. But all this is not relevant because our Lord Jesus is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. This is only telling you, if he had not risen, what is your state? But your state is not because it's totally different and changed because he's risen. Verse 19 says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most pitiable. Why? Because you're hoping in a miracle working man. Today there are so many people who are going around working miracles. And the word says that even the angel of light, the devil can come as an angel of light. Are you with me? Working miracles. And also the, again in Thessalonians says the false one will come with working signs and wonders. So you are believing in that. But if so if it is signs and wonders that you are believing in, then you are most pitiable. Because there is something more that you have to believe in. You have to believe in a resurrected Lord who is the Son of God. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Who took his own blood as a propitiation, as a price for your blood, for your sin and my sin. Because the wages of sin is death. 
The book of Romans chapter 4 verse 22 says, And therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. That is Abraham's faith was accounted. Because it was written, verse 23 says, Now it was not written for his sake alone that it is imputed to him. Next verse. But also for us it shall be imputed to us, that is righteousness, who believe in him, who raised up Jesus and our Lord from the dead. So it is our faith. It's, it's our faith in the resurrected Lord that makes a whole difference. That, so what is imputed to Abraham? The righteousness because he believed in God. That same righteousness is imputed to you and to me and to everyone who believes that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. Because Jesus, the word says 25, verse 25 of Romans 4 says, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. He was delivered up, why? He was delivered up to be dead, to be killed on the cross at Calvary because of our transgression. Are you with me? And who was raised for our justification. He rose with his blood before the Father. Am I getting through? Am I getting through? So he was delivered up for our offenses. That is, he was a substitutionary sacrifice. He paid the price for your sin and my sin. But that was not the end of it. But he rose again for our justification. That is, he went before the Father saying that price is paid on the cross already. Are you with me? So it, unless Jesus is resurrected, that second part of it is not possible. So it is only, you need to understand, your salvation is totally dependent upon believing the finished work at the cross of Calvary, that he was delivered up because of my sin and because of his sacrificial death at the cross of Calvary and the shedding of the last drop of his blood, I am justified. Are you with me? Because he rose up for our justification. Hallelujah. Again, book of Acts chapter 16 verse 31. That is why God's word says, this is the only condition. This is what is needed to understand. People believe, uh, people think wrongly that to be saved, you have to do a lot of things. My dear brothers and sisters, you don't have to do a lot of things. All they have to do, one, make Jesus the Lord and Master of your life. Second, believe that he rose from the dead for my justification. Sorry, I mean the two parts. He died on the cross for my transgression and he rose from the dead for my justification. And if you do that, you are saved. That is why the book of Ro uh, Acts chapter 16 verse 31 says, you believe you believe in the Lord Jesus, you'll be saved. Not only you, but your household will be saved. So this belief is this, that unless you believe in a person, you can't come under his lordship. So believing in him and giving your life to him and allowing him to rule and reign over your life and believing that he paid the price of my sin. First of all, you must agree or rather confess that you are a sinner and, and the wages of my sin is death. And Jesus Christ took upon himself my punishment of death and therefore, I am justified. Justified people translate this just as if I have not sinned. I have been made clean. Hallelujah. The book of Romans chapter 14 verse 9 says, For this end Christ died and rose and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The dead and the living. Is there anything in between? Hello? Is there anything in between? Is there a neuter? Either you are dead or you are alive. Hallelujah. So he's the Lord of everything. Are you with me? It is for this purpose that Jesus, uh, hallelujah, died and rose again. Hallelujah. That he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Everything. Because the living has life only in Jesus. The dead also have life only in Jesus. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 1.21 says, who through him, that is Jesus, believe in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. So you need to understand that our faith, our hope, our hope must be only in Jesus. That is because I'll tell you earlier we read, if in this world only you have hope in Christ, your faith is of, your, of people most pitiable. Our hope and our faith is not on the temporary passing things of the world. But it is centered more on the eternal. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Because Jesus died so that you and I can possess that eternal life with the Father. Hallelujah. Romans 8.33 says, Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. The next verse says, Who is he to, who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen 
who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Today, that is why you need to understand that God is there. He is concerned in your welfare. He knows your weaknesses. He is there to see that, like the word says in the book of <coughs> Psalm 23 verse 3, that he restoreth my soul and makes me walk in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Are you with me? So he is there in the right hand of the Father, concerned about my well-being here. Or, or taking another example in the book of Chronicles, it says, His eyes are roaming all over the world to appear strong on behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to Him. Are you with me? This is what He does. So you need to understand that our hope is in Jesus Christ. And again, the book of Acts chapter 10, 43 says that through His name, whoever believes in Him will receive remission or forgiveness of sins. So again, again, I'm trying to tell you that it is the resurrected Lord who is only capable, who only is capable of coming before the Father with the blood of the sacrifice. Are you with me? So it is, it is the propitiation of my sin by the shedding of blood because the book of Leviticus says blood is to be poured on the altar for the atonement of sins. For your sin and my sin, the blood of Jesus Christ was poured on the altar at the cross at Calvary. Are you with me? He fulfilled the righteous requirement of the law. That is saying in the book of Romans it says that he is just and the justifier of those who have faith in Christ Jesus. This is what you must believe. So everything, justification, everything took place only because our Lord was raised from the dead. He was resurrected. That is why it is so important that you confess with your lips that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. God raised him from the dead is just an act. It actually means God raised him from the dead so that he can come before me, before the Father, with the blood of the Lamb as a propitiation for my sins so that you and I can be justified and therefore you and I can have remission of sins and therefore you and I can have eternal life. Hallelujah. That's it. Through him. Through his name, whoever believes in him shall receive first remission of sins. And so remission of sins is forgiveness of sins. That is possible only when blood is shed. And that is possible only when the resurrected Lord comes with the blood of the Lamb of God. Again, John 20 verse 29 says, Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Hallelujah. It's such a great... Uh, encouragement you and I should have. We believe in the Lord Jesus, not because we have seen him, but because we believe. We believe. That is faith. You read the word in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Let's see what faith is all about. He says, faith is not seeing and believing. Faith is, uh, is the substance of the things hoped for, the evidence of the things not seen. So when you and I believe in Jesus as our Lord, personal Lord, Master and Savior, you are actually demonstrating your unconditional faith in Jesus. Not like Thomas said, you know, unless I touch his, uh, uh, put my hands in his uh, chest and in his hands, I won't believe. That is not faith. Faith is unconditional. Believing, trusting in God. Hallelujah. Again, when you read the word in John 4, 48, then Jesus said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. Hallelujah. Again, John 20 verse 8 says, then the other disciple, that is John. You need to understand this, where everywhere, you know, it is signs and wonders. There earlier it was when you read the word in the book of John chapter 4 verse 48. It was talking about, uh, about a person, was, I'll just tell you the correct reference. It was about a person being sick and then, uh, uh, you know, it is uh, that a nobleman's son was healed. In that process, Jesus is telling you, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. Again, verse uh, John 20, verse 8, is about the resurrection of the Lord. There, you know, Peter and John ran to the, ran to the sepulcher. And of course, uh, John being younger, outran Peter. But he, with due respect to his uh, senior, did not go in, allowed the, Peter to go in first. And the word says very clearly, then the other disciple, that is John, who came to the tomb first, went in also, and he saw and he believed. He saw and he believed. 
but you will find all these people after they saw after they believed they still went back to their old profession they gave up all hope today you and i need to understand it is faith it is not sight